study was to evaluate the effects direct instruction has on closing the vocabulary gap between low and middle socioeconomic status students. The study completed at Conklin Elementary School during the 2015-16 school year. Why study vocabulary instruction? Countless studies have been done to determine the value of vocabulary instruction. Students living in low socioeconomic environments have heard fewer spoken words and engaged in fewer conversations with adults. Students raised in challenging socioeconomic environments are at risk to have a lower vocabulary score on standardized tests. So vocabulary. What is the purpose of the study? Once again, countless studies have been done to determine the value of vocabulary instruction. Vocabulary knowledge starts at home and is greatly influenced by adult interaction. Instruction focusing on story elements and comprehension explicitly helps strengthen vocabulary development. These vocabulary words are given a visual aid, an action, or a real object to help establish a concrete understanding of their meaning. Now, new vocabulary is learned through embedded words in the story and providing children an opportunity to converse their definitions. So once again, we want to practice vocabulary. So prior research study led by Spencer in 2012. Spencer's team completed their study using two schools from England, one school from a socioeconomic disadvantaged area and the other from a socioeconomic advantaged area. Their research compared one nonverbal and six verbal assessments throughout the school year. Their results indicated there are many language difficulties adolescents face across socioeconomic environments. These language difficulties specify there needs to be established equivalent access to in intervention and services for language development. Once again, prior research study facilitated by O'Brien in 2014. O'Brien's team completed their study using two cohorts over a two-year span. Their study totaled 158 ELL students, or English language learning students, attending public schools primarily serving high-poverty immigrant students. Their research measured the access of a family literacy plan. The, the research compared the target groups and the controlled groups vocabulary scores to see if a family literacy program supported vocabulary growth. The research showed the target group which received family literacy program support had a greater increase in vocabulary words. This research supports the importance of a quality vocabulary program has an acquisition of vocabulary words at a young age. The prior research study led by Allison in 2011. Allison's team completed their research using 30 preschoolers from public schools throughout three Louisiana parishes. Their study measured the difference in vocabulary acquisition between the low-income socioeconomic status African-American boys and girls. The results showed African-American boys scored higher than African-American girls on vocabulary tests. The prior research study facilitated by Larson in 2015. Larson's team researched how Sesame Street word on the street aligned to traditional vocabulary instruction. Their study covered seven years and used 180 Sesame Street episodes. Their research compared the instructional methods used in the classroom and on Sesame Street to teach vocabulary words. The results supported explicit direct Vocabulary instruction needs to be used, but educational media can help research-based instructional strategies. 
the prior research study led by Leinbarger in 2013. Leinbarger's team researched the effects of on-screen print and vocabulary acquisition. They used 121 participants ages 4 to 8 years old. These students attended public schools in the Pacific Northwest and the Northeast United States that served 90% low-income students. Their research compared vocabulary scores before and after viewing educational videos. The results showed on-screen exposure to vocabulary words worked for working class students, but not for low socioeconomic students. Low socioeconomic students made vocabulary gains through repeated exposure to vocabulary words without on-screen print. The prior research study facilitated by Gillum in 2014. Gillum's team studied how speech language pathologists can assist the regular classroom vocabulary instruction. They used 43 students from a Title I elementary school located in northern Utah. Their research provided critical information on the effectiveness of an embedded vocabulary instruction during the speech language pathologist intervention time. Prior research study facilitated by Nelson in 2012. Nelson's team examined the effectiveness of language focused instruction on vocabulary development of children living in low income environments. Their study used 22 kindergartners, partic kindergarten participants from a Midwest urban school with 80% of the students receiving free and reduced lunch. Their study was conducted over a 12-week period. Their results showed a positive correlation of vocabulary development through language-focused classroom instruction. The prior research study facilitated by Yildum in 2011. Yildum's team researched the link between vocabulary acquisition and reading comprehension. The study used 125th grade students during the 2008-2009 school year. These students went to public schools in Turkey. They were all from middle class socioeconomic families. The results showed a positive correlation between vocabulary acquisition and reading comprehension. So the method I used to complete the study was a casual comparative. I researched how literacy and vocabulary instruction can close the vocabulary gap between low socioeconomic and middle socioeconomic students. The study used 60 students from Conklin Elementary School located in Rockford, Illinois. The study lasted 20 weeks. I used the Fontes and Pinnell and Dibbles assessment to measure vocabulary knowledge for the pretest to give us a starting point and the post-test to give us our growth. So after 20 weeks of direct literacy and vocabulary instruction, third grade low socioeconomic students close the vocabulary gap. So according to the t-test, results of the Fontes and Pinnell assessment show low socioeconomic status students had a mean, a means of 10 and 67 hundreds and a standard deviation of 56 hundreds, compared to the middle socioeconomic status students who had a means of 3 and 87 hundreds and a standard deviation of 8 and 12 hundreds, indicating a significant difference with the degree of freedom at 14, the T statistic at a negative 6 and 7, 79 hundreds, and the probability of less than 1,000, so it showed a, good, showed a significant change. According to the t-test results of the Dibbles assessment, Low socioeconomic status students had a means of 35 and 46 hundreds, a standard deviation of 92 and 15 hundreds, compared to the middle socioeconomic status students who had a means of 70 and 11 hundreds, and a standard deviation of 190 
in 6700 it's indicating a difference which is once again the degrees of freedom is 14 the t statistics at negative 5 and 8 hundredths and then the probability is once again less than 1 thousandths okay after 20 weeks of direct literacy vocabulary instruction fifth grade most socioeconomic students did not close the vocabulary gap so again, according to the T-test results of the Fontes and Pinnell assessment, low socioeconomic students grew in FMP scores. They had a means of 4 and 85 hundreds with a standard deviation of 6 and 99 hundreds. That's compared to the middle socioeconomic status students who had a means of 4 and 46 hundreds with a standard deviation of 9 and 17 hundreds. This indicated a significant difference because the degree of freedom is 14 the T statistic, once again, is a negative 4 in 1800s, when the probability of it having is less than 1,000. Then according to the T-test results of the Dibbles assessment, low socioeconomic student, students had a means of 73 and 37 hundreds with a standard deviation of 207 and 25 hundreds. That's compared to the middle socioeconomic status students who had a means of 81 and 110, a standard deviation of 218 and 71 hundreds. This indicated really no difference in, in the t-test because the degree of freedom is 14, the t-statistic is, is a negative 36 hundredth, but the probability is less than 72 hundredths. So fifth grade didn't show closing the gap. Here are the limitations I identified for further research. So a limitation in this study was how direct instruction was delivered in different classrooms. In future research, drafting an instructional guideline for all teachers to use will help determine if direct literacy and vocabulary instruction helps close the vocabulary gap. Another one is a limitation in the study was how grade level facilitated the Fontes and Pinnell and Dibbles assessment to create strong evidence that the direct literacy and vocabulary instruction helps close the vocabulary gap. Future research should designate one test administrator to work with all students to improve consistency and ensure validity of the tests that we're doing. These are the implications for further research. The, imp the implications of the present experiment is that those who are concerned about the vocabulary gap consider the impact direct instruction and vocabulary instruction can have on closing the vocabulary gap. The current study supports the direct literacy and vocabulary instruction has the potential to close the vocabulary gap between low socioeconomic status and middle socioeconomic status students. I say for future research on the, dip, on the effectiveness of repeated exposure to vocabulary words in order to shrink the vocabulary gap would benefit both students and teachers by strengthening reading skills. So my final thoughts for future research. Using repeated word exposure can help close the vocabulary gap between low socioeconomic status and middle socioeconomic status students. To provide opportunities for repeated exposure, the use of bulletin board displaying weekly vocabulary words should be used in every classroom. The research completed by Leinbarger in 2013 states repeated exposure is a learning strategy linked to long-term retention of information. So the more the kids see it, the better chance they have of remembering the word and using it in their conversations. Any questions? How were the students divided up? Okay, so the students were divided up between the third and fifth grade classes in Conklin. We took 15 low socioeconomic status students and 15 middle socioeconomic status students. It's a total of 30 between third and fifth grade students. Well, you take 
from this study and apply to your teaching? Okay, so across all the content areas, I will focus vocabulary exposure to ensure comprehension. So, if we're in math, we'll focus on the math vocabulary words. If we're in science, we'll focus on science vocabulary words, social studies, social studies vocabulary words, so embedded in them, so they have a better understanding of those meanings. And any changes that you would make in further studies? Yes, as I already stated, I am aware of the limitations of the study and would choose one testing administrator and offer guidelines to teachers for teaching vocabulary to ensure the validity of our study. Thanks. Coming out today. <laughs>